This video was brought to you by Control Laboratorium, University of Indonesia. Hello, welcome back. In the last video, we already talked about system stability. I know it's a long video, but don't worry, it's worth it. We need a stable system in order to analyze its transient response and its steady-state error. Analyzing transient response and steady-state error of an unstable system is useless. So, let's get started. First, what is an order of a system? The order of a system is the order of the highest derivative of its differential equation. Put it simply, it is the highest power in the denominator of its transfer function. This particular transfer function is said to be third order. And this one is a second order system. Throughout the course, we will mainly focus our discussions on first and second order systems. Physically applicable system will take on these general form. For a first order system, Ta is the time constant, and for a second order system, omega n is natural frequency, and zeta is the damping ratio, and k is called the gain of the system. How about higher order systems? Higher order system will have more than two poles, but there will be only one or two dominant poles. This dominant pole are the ones who decide the system behavior meaning that the higher order system will generalize to first or second order system for analysis. There are four types of responses for second order systems. There are underdamped, overdamped, critically damped, and undamped or oscillatory. Undamped response is the response of a marginally stable system that oscillates. The other three is the responses of the stable systems. Underdamped response is characterized by overshoot, while overdamped response has no overshoot. What about overdamped and critically damped? Critically damped response has faster response than overdamped response and without overshoot also. It may not be obvious by just looking at the graph. It is clearer if we look at the pole location. An undamped system's poles are located on the imaginary axis. Since it is a second-order system, there are two poles. Note that for a system to be physically realizable, poles that have imaginary component should have its conjugate. There can't be a pole that has an imaginary component and has no conjugate. Underdamped systems has poles that have imaginary component, while overdamped and critically damped systems poles only lie at the real axis. What makes overdamped and critically damped different is overlapping. Overdamped response poles do not overlap, while critically damped response poles overlap. That was response types. Now we move to response specification. Commonly, the specifications are as follows. The rise time, the peak time, the settling time. The rise time is the time required to move from 10% of its final value to 90% of the final value. Settling time is the time required to reach and stay within 2% of its final value. The peak time is the time required to reach the maximum of the first and percent overshoot is the amount of waveform overshoots the steady state value at its peak relative to the steady state value. You can calculate these specifications using this fancy formulae. The formulas are as follows. You can learn more about these formulas in the Control Systems Engineering reference book by Norman S. Nice. Let's talk about our last measurement of performance of control systems, the steady state error. Steady state error is the difference between the reference input and actual output of our system for a prescribed test input as time approaches infinity. Back to our elevator case, the steady state error is the difference between our desired floor and the value when the response reaches this plateau. 
Notice that I said prescribed test input, not arbitrary input. The step input will look something like this. The second one is the ramp input. The ramp input will look something like this. And the third one is the parabolic input. This is how a parabolic input looks like. Notice that all three inputs have different parameters. And therefore, different functions R of t and different function in the frequency domain R of s. We should discuss about the vinyl value theorem first. Earlier, state state error is measured as time approaches infinity, meaning that our analysis is still in the time domain function. But our system is represented as a frequency domain function. The vinyl value theorem states that limit towards infinity of f of t is equal to limit towards zero of s f of s, where f of s is a Laplace transform of f of t. So, if our steady state error is limit towards infinity of e of t, then in the frequency domain function, our steady state error becomes limit towards zero of s e of s. There are two most common form of systems that we will analyze its steady state error. The first one is this straightforward system. From our definition of steady state error, we know that e of s is equal to r of s minus c of s. Also, we know that c of s is equal to r of s times t of s. Substituting it, we get e of s is equal to r of s times 1 minus t of s. Using our final value theorem, we get the steady state error to be a limit towards 0 of s r of s times 1 minus t of s. We can do the same thing for the second form, the negative unity feedback system. We know that E of s is equal to R of s minus C of s, and C of s is equal to E of s times G of s. Substituting it, we get E of s is equal to R of s over 1 plus G of s. Again, using final value theorem, we get the steady state error to be a limit towards 0 of s r of s over 1 plus g of s. Given you already knew the formula to compute steady state error, you just need to plug in the reference input r of s, whether it is step, ramp, or parabolic, and your known system in g of s or t of s form. There's one more important thing you should know in this part. That is the static error constant. There are three types of static error constant. The position error constant, or Kp, velocity error constant, Kv, and acceleration error constant, or Ka. They are derived from steady state error formula of negative unity feedback system when it is being tested by unit step input, ramp input, and parabolic input, respectively. If we plug in a unit step input, that is R of s is equal to 1 over s, into our steady state error formula, we get this equation. Position error constant Kp is limit towards 0 f s g of s. Same thing applies if we want to derive velocity error constant or Kv using ramp input and acceleration constant Ka using parabolic input. Why is this important? Well, the concepts will be clear when designing controllers or compensators using the root locus method. For now, you just need to know that there is the term static error constant how to compute it, and how to convert static error constant into steady state error. That's it for this time. See you on the next module.